This week's video, I'm going to be talking about setting joint limits, which is kind of a continuation of what I talked about last week on as-built joints. So let's take a look. So this video is a continuation of last week's video where I was talking about as-built joints. And I had a couple people ask questions about joint limits. So that's what I wanted to talk about uh, on this video. Uh, so this is the example I used last week where we created the um, as-built joints, but some of you keen-eyed people noticed that this assembly, as I, as I rotated it, it kind of slid out of the clamp as we rotated that. Um, and yes, you were correct. And the reason for that was because I didn't set any limits for how this assembly here can move inside this clamp. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show how you would go about doing that. So we have a slider joint set up for this particular um, sub-assembly right here. And we can see that here in our relationship joints. And if you hover over the slider joint, you'll see this little um, arrow that kind of appears right here. It says Edit Motion Limits. And if I click on that, it brings up my Motion Limits dialog. Now what a lot of people do which I find causes a little bit of confusion, is they'll turn on both the minimum and the maximum, and they get these little flags that appear right here, and they'll start to drag this around, and it gets kind of confusing on what, what is the minimum, and what is the maximum, and what am I doing here? So here's a little trick that I do uh, when I set my limits, is I'll go ahead and only turn on one of them and you'll notice that only one flag shows up. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this, and let's just drag this to the right, and in this first example, I'm gonna do it visually, and in the next example, we're gonna do it um, where it's gonna be exact. We're gonna use Fusion to calculate what the minimum and maximum is gonna be. So you can kinda of see here, I can move this around, and I'm just gonna move this over, um, you can kinda of see uh, the underlying part there. So let's just move this and we can kind of see it's actually it looks like around zero. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and maybe drag that just a little bit like 0 0.007. And then I'll go ahead and turn on the maximum and turn off the minimum. And you can see there's only one flag visible right there. So I'm going to grab that guy and drag that over in this direction. And again, we can kind of see this material appearing here. So it probably can't go that far. So let's just go maybe like to 0.725. So now we can see that we've set the minimum and the maximum um, from 0 to 0.725. And if I hit OK, and now I start to drag this, you can see it can't go any further that direction, and it can't go any further that direction. So that's my first little tip is don't turn both flags on because it, it kind of causes a little bit of confusion of which one am I editing, which one am I modifying. Now the other thing I kind of recommend is to set the rest position. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit this again, and you'll notice it says rest. So um, basically that's where it would kind of snap back to when we're not moving it at all. And I might go like halfway. So I'll go ahead and turn on this, and let's just do maybe like, 0.72 divided by 2 and you can kind of see it gives me a preview of that washer. I'll just go ahead and say OK and now if I drag this left and right it still is showing me my limits but when I let go it snaps back to that rest position and the reason I like that is you know now when I rotate we can see that that um, subassembly is staying in that rested position as I'm rotating this assembly. I can still visualize what this looks like, but it'll always snap back. Now, if I want to, I could turn that rest off, say okay, and I could position that there, but you'll notice as I rotate, it kind of looks like it's sliding up along <laughs> that sliding joint. And so that's kind of why I like to use that rest position in, in some cases, not always, but in some cases I like to have that rest position turned on. 
So in this example, we have a vise that has a sliding jaw that can move back and forth, but you'll notice that there's no limits set so it can actually like self-intersect. So obviously we want to set some limits, but you're gonna see we're gonna run into an issue if we use the exact same methodology that we used in the last example. So for example, if I come in here and um, edit this slider joint and I wanna set the motion limits, I'll go ahead and let's just turn on, for example, the maximum and I'll grab that flag and start to drag. You'll see the issue that we're running into. It's only moving this one component and it's not moving this soft jaw that's like rigidly attached to it because we're only working with one component at a time. And so I can't just randomly drag and figure out how far I want to move this and hope that it would be correct. So we can't use that dragging methodology that I showed in the last example. So let's use a neat, cool trick. So under the assemble menu, we have an option for what's called contact sets. Now you'll notice it says enable all contact. I don't recommend that you use that in assemblies that have lots of faces, like with threads or screws or something like that because it calculates everything all at, all at once. Um, so we're gonna use enable contact sets, and then we're gonna do a new contact set. And it's asking for bodies or components, and we wanna know when that body or component runs into that body or component. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say okay. And now when I drag this slider jaw, you'll notice that the soft jaw moves with it. And if I continue dragging to the left, it hits that other jaw and then it stops. Even though I'm continuing to drag, it has stopped. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let go. Now the question is, how far did it go? Well, if we go into the assemble menu and say drive joints, we can click on the slider joint right here, or we can click on it in the browser over here. And we can see the exact distance that it moved. 1.219 inches. So I'm going to copy that into my clipboard. So I'm going to hit Control C and I just copied that into my clipboard. Now if we go into the slider joint and the motion limits, I can specify my maximum and I'm just going to paste that number into my maximum field and say OK. And if I drag this now, I can still move in this direction and we still have the contact set, so we'll turn that off here in a minute, but we've, we've basically set the maximum distance it can go in that direction. Now if I drag this way, you'll notice it's still clashing because we only said determine when the two soft jaws intersect. So let's go ahead and create a new contact set, and we want to know when this body will run into um, either, let's just say, like this body here, for example. So now when I start to drag, I can move back, and it looks like I actually need to know um, when it intersects with that body, so let's do that instead. So let's do new contact set, that guy with that guy, I'll say okay, and drag back, and you can see how it's, it's kind of slow because it's doing all that live calculation, but it's finally stopped when it hit that part right there. So I'll do the exact same thing. I'll come in and say um, drive joints. We'll click on that slider joint and we can see it's minus 0.812. So I'll copy that. We'll edit our slider joint again and that's gonna be our minimum distance. So I'll go ahead and paste that in there. And so now we have the total range of minus 0.812 all the way to 1.219. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and then I'm going to disable contact because we don't want it to live calculate anymore. So I'm going to say disable contact, and now if I drag this, you can see it's much faster, but we've physically set the limits on how far these jaws can move. So that's a neat little tip on using the contact sets and then the drive joints to figure out what the distance was uh, to enter those into our motion limits.
Uh, one more quick tip just to make this a little bit more interesting. I want to combine these two joints together. So let's do a motion link. Um, I'll revert my position. I want to link the revolute joint um, and the slider joint together. So you can kind of see when one rotates, when we crank this, the, uh, the jaw moves. And you'll notice if I keep cranking, it stops. I can't crank anymore. If I go the other direction, it stops and I can't crank anymore, even though I'm still rotating. So hopefully that answers your questions about motion links. Um, again, really quick review. I recommend toggling just one of the minimum or maximum toggles on at a time instead of both. I think it just makes it easier when you're setting your motion limits. And then also use the contact sets to determine how far your components actually physically can move in your assemblies and use those numbers to determine your motion limits. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. If you need help learning Fusion, visit my webpage at cadedllc.com. And as always, have fun learning Fusion.